G'day viewers, my name is Michael and welcome to Single Racer. Now in today's video, I want to give you my force feedback settings for the beta version of Automobilista 2, but this will of course also apply to the more general early access version that you can buy on Steam as well. But given that there are work in progress and they're normally updated quite regularly, uh, keep in mind that this could change, but I'm pretty confident in my settings unless there's a major change to the way the force feedback works within the sim. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my force feedback and general settings for the Logitech G29 that I currently use. But this should also apply for the earlier G27 and also my previous wheel the Logitech Driving Force GT. All these settings really should apply as a whole given how similar these wheels are. But what I want to do now is give this advice in three parts and given there's a chance that the first two parts will probably not apply to you at all, I'll have timestamps for every part in the description and if you need to you can check uh, the timestamp and go straight to that information. So the first part will be because this happened to me where an update was given to the beta version that I own of Automobilista 2 and suddenly my wheel wouldn't calibrate. It, it just wasn't recognized in the software. So uh, I wasn't sure how to get around this and want to show you just in case this happens to you. The second thing I want to do is because I don't use the standard 900 wheel rotation and I've worked out a pattern in a lot of other sims how to get a tighter feel for your wheel or the turn of your wheel and I want to show you how to do that also in not only Automobilista 2 but when you see this for the first time you can apply this to other games like Assetto Corsa Competition and uh, Project Cars 2 as well both run a similar type of setup and the last thing will be my force feedback settings and uh, you know just general settings for the wheel but also why I actually selected them in the first place so let's move on now to the first section if you're having trouble even getting the wheel recognized within the sim. And so what I want to do now is backtrack a little bit because uh, I've got the wheel currently set up, it's plugged in and so if you look at the general software that you get with it you can see it's listed here, it's working, the settings all work, uh, you know everything was fine and I was racing already in uh, the beta version of Automobilista 2 but then there was an update applied and I couldn't calibrate the wheel. Now it wasn't that I couldn't calibrate it, it, it was that the wheel wasn't working when I tried to race. So I went back and thought okay there's an update I'll just cal recalibrate it. Uh, it's probably reset something and I'd turn the wheel and nothing would happen. Now this is a very narrow focus in that I'm an, not an expert and this just helped me so it might help you but if you're not interested in this section again just click on the timestamp for the next section if you're interested in that. But the way I got around it was I opened up control panel and you come here to devices and printers so you click on that and if your G29 is plugged in you should see it there in the list. So what I did was I right clicked and I, I highlighted game controller settings and then you just normally go to properties and there it is there. Now I'll move my wheel and you can see hopefully you can see that plus sign moving in the box there and uh, you know all the buttons working and everything. So it was working but the plus sign was right down the bottom and it, it felt kind of wrong like it was working but not quite as it uh, should have. And I wasn't sure what to do, so I thought, oh, okay, let me recheck the settings. And I thought, okay, well, that's what I probably need to do. So uh, I won't do it now, but what I did do was uh, reset the to default. Then I clicked on calibrate, which runs you through each section. So in other words, turn your wheel, 
pressure, brake and accelerator. And then what happened was, when I did that and went back to the test, the plus sign had gone from sitting on the bottom here in its incorrect spot to how it is now, and it was all working. I then, because I did that, clicked apply, and then OK, and then suddenly the wheel worked in the game. So that's how I got uh, the wheel to recalibrate within Automobilista 2. Okay folks, so now we fix that calibration problem, it's now as if the software Automobilista 2 could read a file or read the correct information it needed to calibrate the wheel correctly. So what I want to show you here is how you um, can set the wheel if you're feeling very vague in the center of the road or you don't use a 900 wheel rotation. Now, most people do, of course, but I actually use a 240 wheel rotation because I like that tighter feel of like an F1 wheel, wheel where you only turn the wheel from, uh, say, if you're looking at a clock face, uh, you've got your hands resting at 9 to 3 and you turn it to 12 and 6. That's the most I prefer to turn my wheel. A lot of other people tend to use uh, a 540, which is a more common wheel rotation. So I just want to show you how you do that, if that's what you want, or you're getting that vague feeling in the center of the wheel. So when you're driving down the straight of a road and the wheel is dead center and, you f and it feels very vague, this can often tighten that feeling up. So what I do is I go to calibrate the wheel, I do what it says here and I turn the wheel fully to get to 100%. So full wheel rotation, full lock to, to when it hits 100 and go next. But now what I do is it says hold the wheel uh, either 90 degrees clockwise or anti-clockwise, meaning that as you see the wheel turn in the diagram, uh, let me see, so there's on the clock face 9 and 3 and now it goes to 12 and 6 and that's what I'm talking about. So it's saying turn the wheel to 12 and 6 and that's how you get your uh, wheel rotation, your, your um, uh, a kind of setting for the 900 wheel rotation. But what I do to get around that is I don't turn it as much. So what I mean is, if you think of that clock face, and there's um, nine and a three, is I turn the wheel to about, on that clock face, say um, 10 and four, or you know, 11 and five, 10 and four, depending on how tight you want it. So in my case, the number I usually go by is say 1260, or uh, in this case, I actually did it at 1160. Now I can't quite hit 1160 exactly. But if I do this now, so we'll just leave it there. So I'll give it a little tap, that's it. Just one more tap, that's it. Oh, I got it, beautiful. So now I've let the wheel go and the wheel, um, those center arms that you see in the diagram are set to roughly say, uh, nine and a half or ten on the clock face to four on the clock face. And if I go click now, what that means, and go save, of course, is now when I turn the wheel uh, to the proper uh, 12 and 6 on the clock face, it's turning much, much sharper and has much more impact and I don't have to turn the wheel as much. So it just gives me a tighter feel rather than coming to a hairpin and turning the wheel, you know, two or three times. I often talk about like a semi-trailer, you know, you just keep turning and turning the wheel. For me to turn a hairpin, I only have to go to 12 and six of a light turn of the wheel and it will turn fully around that hairpin. Okay, so while we're here, I may as well do the pedals included. And one thing you might notice in the software that I did before is the pedals seem inverted, but that's just the way the software works. In other words, it was going from fully colored to zero 
where it doesn't affect it's just the way the software works um, in the control panel but you'll see here it works perfectly as it should normally so you save that as well but one key important thing here just before we leave this section for those that want to calibrate using a tighter turn like I did just then you can use this same technique in uh, Assetto Corsa Competizione um, uh, Project Cars 2 any uh, I don't want to do it again but any uh, software that uses that sort of that goes up to some go up to 1400 some go up to 1200 and when you calibrate the wheel rather than do what it says which is go to uh, the 12 and 6 you know turn your wheel 90 degrees just turn it a bit less and you'll get a tighter uh, more reactive feel in your wheel and that can be much better when you've got that vague loose feeling especially in project cars too it helped me a lot in that because it just felt numb in the center so now let's move on to my final force feedback settings okay folks so here we are and these are the settings that I currently use in the beta version of Automobilista 2 now I will stress again that if there was a major update that completely changed the way the force feedback works this could probably change but it's unlikely to change a lot because I'm very happy with these settings but I'll talk you through why I have these settings set the way I do and I consider the first two linked so the gain which is just how much strength you have and it's normally set to 100 and the force boost which is normally set to 50 and so what I do is uh, there's a theory that goes around that and I I agree with th this theory that the less force feedback you have the more you um, feel what the road is doing now the example I used in a, in a previous video was if you had a corrugated iron roof and I talked about that as being the feed, uh, force feedback so you'll see in the picture here the curbs here and what I argued was the corrugated iron roof was that feeling when you run over a curb but what I felt was when you tone down the amount of force feedback it became as if you ran your fingers on one hand over your knuckles on the other and you felt like you could feel all the little subtle uh, nuances that force feedback gives you because you're not drowning your wheel in force feedback or in heaviness and it gives you more information now that's just a personal opinion but that's why I go by so I turn it down but the reason that I turn force boost up is because I acknowledge that the G29, the Logitech G29 or 920 uh, are very weak wheels to be honest when compared to the current trend of direct drive wheels. You know, they're, they're quite weak. So the reason you would turn this up to 70 is that it's talking about your low force. So as you're coming to a hairpin and you're driving very slow the wheel is not powerful enough to give you the correct information and so by putting that up to 70 it just makes that part of the force feedback stronger to still uh, give you the information to react to a tight turn or a slow bit of driving on a particular bump or something uh, and as you speed up then that part of the force feedback dies down and goes more by the gain uh, that takes over. So I feel that I want the strength on the low end or slow speeds when I hit a bump and then for it to disappear the higher speed that I uh, get to when, when I reach you know, those higher speeds. Now the one thing that I did discover because I found this out from um, Assetto Corsa. So in my Assetto Corsa tutorial, I turn all the force feed uh, or the FX options off. And the reason is because the theory about the FX options is that they are um, fake settings. In other words, you could want them and they could be good. So that's set 
uh, to 50 as well. And uh, the argument is that they'll enhance uh, something that you maybe are not feeling through uh, for whatever reason in your wheel. But they are deliberately fake. They, they're trying to exaggerate the feeling. And so normally I turn them off. So in the Seto Corsa, those three settings are all turned off and the only one I, I moved back up again was the slip, which is what happens when you lock your wheels because I wanted to exaggerate the wheel to go limp. And you know, that to me was a good indicator that, oh, I've lost grip or the wheels have locked, I've lost grip, get it back. So I deliberately wanted to enhance that on my weak force feedback wheel. So I understood that and had that high deliberately. So my instant reaction was to turn this to zero because I don't like those fake effects. But I want to show you an instance now where I realized that by turning it up to 30, there was one example where it felt better. And let me try and simulate that for you now. Okay, so I've just come out of the pits now in the uh, V8 supercar on the Adelaide circuit in Automobilista 2. And what I noticed was changing that slider, the FX slider, down to zero felt so much better in every way, except one. And that's what I want to try and get across. It might be a bit hard to show you, but all the high-end force feedback felt better by changing it from 50 to zero. But then when I tried a lower setting, so I have it set to 30, there was one thing that felt better, or almost as if you needed the feeling. So I'll try and mimic it here. And it's the, when you come out of the corner of an apex, uh, sorry, come out of the apex of a corner, and it starts sliding. So it's that effect there. And what happened by having it set to zero, so I'll try it again here, that, that slide there. And by having it set to zero, there was no feeling of what the back tyre was doing, almost sort of like, um, uh, you know, when it compressed the weight onto the back tyre because you were accelerating. Everything else found, felt fantastic, but I lost that feeling when I turned it to zero. So as I there as I screech around the corner like that by having it reset to 30 uh, I seem to get that feeling of the scrubbing of the back tire as it lost grip and started to spin and then we got the grip back it was as though setting it to 30 you needed that sort of information just purely for that back wheel spinning at low speed when you accelerated it too hard. So uh, let's go back to the menu and I'll finalize my other settings. Okay folks, so let's do a summary now because there are three other settings that I normally change. It's part of a pattern that I use because mainly of my choice to choose a 240 wheel rotation and they tend to work together so let me go through it now but just to recap the force feedback settings i turn the force feedback down because it just helps feel all the little nuances at least i think so but i turn the low force boost up because the g-force uh, G29, uh, so the, sorry, I'll say that again, the Logitech G29 is considered a low um, or probably one of the weakest force feedback wheels you could get um, at this stage. So by boosting the low force up, meaning the effects you feel at very low speed, just kind of helps overall as a complete package to feel what it's doing when it's slow speed but then as you uh, increase speed that lessens as you uh, engage more speed and feel more bumps as the speed increases. Now the effects as I mentioned is a fake, um, usually a fake or a canned effect uh, but by switching it off 
I found that I didn't feel, as I was coming out of the corner and the wheels started spinning, uh, I didn't feel what they were doing at all. There was no sensation. So I noticed by setting it to 30, and you can experiment, say, with, uh, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30, uh, I got a much better feeling just purely on that of, you know, I've accelerated too hard, the wheel started spinning, and I could actually feel it through the wheel by having that effect set to 30. The spring uh, strength, um, sorry, the menu spring strength is just purely if you are someone who uses the wheel as your controller in the menus, that's all it does is control the force that the wheel returns into the menu. And if you were a direct drive user, a DD wheel user, and uh, you know, you use the wheel, you would probably turn that down so it's not as strong trying to recenter itself. But given that I use VR, I also use a mouse to control the menu, so I don't change this at all. So it has no bearing for me, but it's just uh, for the wheel strength when you're using the wheel as your controller in the menus. Now the uh, assignments are just pure choice. You know, you really should um, be setting the buttons to how what you like best. Uh, really, no one can help you on that. It's just personal choice. But the three other settings that I do change, always change, um, or prefer to change based on most of the sims that I drive. Uh, and that's because the main one is that they work together with the 240 wheel rotation. So I put steering sensitivity and uh, a few updates ago, for any people that might have uh, been early adopters, this was actually grayed out, so it didn't give me that choice. But now, thankfully, it has, and I set it up to 100. And the reason, the simple reason for that is, the people think that um, a lot of times when you set a wheel to read the 240 or 540, what that means is it's always tighter all the time. Well, technically, by setting the sensitivity, that's not correct. What it does do is, I'm approaching a hairpin on this track, say, um, I have the wheel at 240 wheel rotation, so I get to the hairpin and it means that at slow speeds, I can turn the wheel just very minimally, you know, like an F1 car, and it will successfully turn the hairpin corner at turning the wheel no more than to 12 to 6 on the clock face. But what happens is, as I come out of the corner, if you imagine the next straight is really, really long, as I build up speed, by having the sensitivity at 100, it means that the, the wheel almost at a certain speed, probably around the 80-ish mark, returns to normal. Because the idea of that is because you don't want to be driving 300 kilometers down the straight, you get to another tight turn and suddenly at 300 kilometers, you turn the wheel one inch and you, you go off into the trees, so, or into the, into the barrier. So, the sensitivity works together with the lower wheel rotation to have a smooth arc all the way through um, the wheel range. And to me, it's the two are combined if you like using a lower uh, wheel rotation than 900. The, the other two things are, um, by default, they're both set to 50. That's the throttle sensitivity and brake sensitivity. And there's an argument because I don't know that much about it, but I believe, I think my pedals are like 8-bit and the better pedals are 16-bit. And what that simply means is that because mine is a, a low-cost, low-quality um, pedal and wheel set, is as you're pressing the pedal uh, or the accelerator or the brake, there's not as many steps, uh, you know, like if you think of literally going up steps to recognize how much you're pushing down the wheel. Um, and the reason high-end uh, pedals are high-end is because they they can read more steps as you're pressing, especially like if you're just, you're trying not to spin the wheels and you're pressing half accelerator, and so you get that much better reading. So some people say that by setting it up to 100, um, the throttle or the brake, you on lower end wheels, you get more numbers of steps so that in other words, as I 
uh, am in a, a hyper car that's got, um, you know, extraordinary uh, boost at top speed, and I don't want to hit that uh, top part of the accelerator range by having a three quarter pedal. Um, by having it at 100, there's an argument to say, I might be able to get more steps or more sensitivity through the range as I'm pressing the throttle or the brake. All you can do really, and this is sim related as well, is just experiment between the 20, um, sorry, the 50, which is the default, and try it at 100 and see what you like. But the one thing that definitely worked for me was this sitting here. Now, in, in my opinion, the dampening is another fake canned effect. And what I noticed was that by having my force feedback set to this, it felt 90% good, but it didn't feel as good as something like a Sato Corsa or whatever. And I noticed as soon as I set this down all the way to zero, boom, it just, everything clicked into place into place and to me it was perfect and barring maybe one or two degrees either direction on the force feedback i don't think i'm going to get a better setting for me personally so i found the by setting the dampening down to zero that was the final key in the puzzle to make it all or the piece in the puzzle <laughs> i should say um, to make it all work together to hopefully give you the best feeling if you own a Logitech G29. So these are my sittings. Now I hope they helped you, I hope, or at least, uh, even if they don't help you, they give you a guide as to how you might go about trying to find your own settings that you prefer, because everyone prefers different settings. And if we're true sim racers, we all should understand that, you know, we're trying to help each other um, get the best out of our gear, the hardware and everything we do related to sim racing. So I hope it helps you. And if there's a major update where the force feedback changes dramatically, then I'll do an updated version of this video. So for now, this is Michael signing out for Single Racer. I'll catch you next time. I hope it helped. See you later and happy racing.